Hey everyone, how are you doing? I just thought I'd give you a few tidbits of information about this Bell SRT modular helmet. First of all, I don't remember hearing or seeing anything about it being fog free, but I rode it to work the other day in the fog and tried breathing really heavy, everything was closed up, and I tried uh, coughing a few times and it never fogged up. So that's pretty awesome. The inner visor is not dark enough for me. It was just uh, way too light. So I ended up replacing the outer visor with the Bell Panavision Pro Tent. It's kind of like the Transitions visor, and it made it just right for me to be, it's now dark enough, no problem. The outer visor only has one detent. If you look here, that's, that's the only detent it has right there. The rest, you can set it anywhere you want because it's it's very tactile and the places the the movement of it is very subtle but you can you can stop it at any location so that's nice you're not limited to you know a certain spot you can put it anywhere the ear pockets for speakers if you use a, a Cena system I can't speak for scallop but the ear pockets are a little bit deeper and a little bit wider than some of the helmets I've had, which is nice because when you're trying to configure all the wiring and stuff like that, it, it gives you that extra room. The cheek pads have an extension that that extends over the ear pockets, but it's a real thin material. It's not like the cheek pad itself. It's real thin. And at first I was like, what in the world is this extra piece of material? I'd never seen anything like that, but basically, it's just there for your comfort. Speaking of uh, Cena's and um, placement, I'll post some pictures so that they're clearer. But over here, I'm going to turn my head, you'll notice that here is the mechanism that raises and lowers the inner visor, which by the way, comes down much farther than uh, most um, inner visors I've seen. So this mechanism is kind of right in the way when you're putting the clamp mount for the Cena. So you have to go a little bit farther back. And I used the stick-on mount, and it also has to go farther back because you have this wide pano vision, which is great because it gives you that wonderful peripheral vision that everybody wants but it just means that everything uh, gets moved back a little bit and, I, and I, at first I was like man I can't I can't use this that's way too far back but I got it you know as close as possible to the front and uh, I still you know let me know what you think of the view but it, it's 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 okay okay the second thing I wanted to talk about real quick is, I don't know if some of you have read or noticed that Utah passed the law that legalizes lane filtering. The rules or the guidelines are you have to be in a zone where there's at least a minimum of two lanes in both directions. The traffic has to be going 45 miles per hour or slower. And you cannot be going faster than 15 miles per hour and traffic has to be completely stopped. Once it starts going again, you have to get back in line. When I was reading some of the comments, which I shouldn't do because it just makes me mad, some people who don't aren't motorcyclists, obviously, were making the most hateful comments about uh, motorcyclists being able to lane split and how they would block you if, you're, if they see you coming or throw something out their window or open their door on you or do anything they can to keep you from getting you know, through all the cars. Now, I don't understand that. You know, obviously, you don't, if you don't ride, you might not know that lane filtering is not necessarily about speeding or being first or getting there before you or being in front of you. It's about safety. And if you have a family member or a good friend or somebody you know who rides, isn't that what you want is for them to, you know, be as safe as possible? You'd think that 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 that's what people would want. I don't understand the hate comments. Is it is it just 
plain old simple road rage? Is it just that people don't like somebody passing them because they can't go anywhere? That's all I'm going to say about that. Okay, we are at Gillespie Airfield, and I just thought I'd stop and show you the cosmetic changes that I've made to my bike. This is a 2016 Honda NC700X, and we switched the body parts out, the silver ones, we switched them out with the 2017 Honda NC700X parts. So I wanted to show this, show this to you because it's just an absolutely gorgeous shade of red. It is the Honda Candy Prominence Red color. And I absolutely love it. Um, hopefully this camera shows you the, the true the true shade of this red. It's just beautiful. I'll try to post some pictures. We got them from Babbitt's online. Most of them and then a couple extra parts that they didn't have we got from Rocky Mountain ATV. I'm not sure what every single part is called but this here is the uh, cowl. Um, this part is the shroud and then there's this little part here the uh, luggage case or the frunk as we affectionately call it in NC world and then there's this part here and the fender I just love the color and that part there that silver part was the only part that they don't switch out it stays on permanently and Tell me what you think. It's a beautiful, beautiful candy red, isn't it? With some uh, metallic in it and um, it really stands out. People at my work thought I had bought a brand new bike. It really changes the look of it completely, I think. All right, that's all I have for today. Hope you guys ride safe and I know you're enjoying the change in weather that we've been having lately. At least we are here. Take care and ride safe, everyone. Bye.